Hello and welcome to this CUBE conversation. I'm Rob Streche, Managing Director with the CUBE Research, and we're digging into Build Now and for the Future with Dell and Red Hat. Right now, I think it's safe to say that two topics that are top of mind of most IT organizations and really the topic of discussion are AI infrastructure and virtualization. Today, we're going to dig into these two topics with the latest announcement from Dell and Red Hat. Joining me today are friends of theCUBE and friends of mine, truthfully, uh, Allison Langdon, who's the Director of Product Marketing for Multi-Cloud and HCI at Dell Technologies, and Stu Miniman, Senior Director of Market Insights Hybrid Platforms at Red Hat. Welcome both. Thanks, Rob. Thanks. Great to be with you again. Yeah, always great to have you guys on because I think you know how to bring a lot of the information around this. Uh, so before we get into the latest announcements, let's kind of talk about why Dell and Red Hat are working together yet again. Uh, Allison, let's uh, start with you. Sure, um, so thanks for having me. Really excited to talk about our latest um, announcements in partnership with Red Hat. Um, you know, what we're hearing from our customers first and foremost is that they're looking for simplicity. I mean, especially with the complexity out there right now between the virtualization landscape, um, the pace of AI, you know, there's really more pressure than ever to keep pace and invest in solutions that keep the, their path forward in the future in mind, right? Um, a good example of this is container adoption. So, you know, with 67% um, of organizations having container-based, you know, production applications today and another 18% you know, looking to have deploying container-based applications um, within the next 12 months, it's really an imperative to have a container management strategy in place, right? Um, and I think this has been true for a while, but I think the pace of that is just accelerating. Um, and then I would also say being able to balance these traditional workloads along with these future um, modern applications um, is just one reason that is driving complexity for our customers. Another thing we're hearing is being able to have a seamless and consistent experience between their on-prem and public cloud environments continues to be a challenge, right? And our, you know, their IT teams just don't have the resources or, um, you know, the staff to learn all managing the tools and um, ecosystems of all of these different, um, all of these different environments. And so being able to have consistency, a seamless experience where you can leverage common tools, um, common skill sets across your IT estate is becoming increasingly important. All of that being said, um, simplicity is really at the core of what we're doing with Red Hat, being able to drive simplicity for our customers. Um, Red Hat's been a strategic partner of ours for over 24 years. And you know, together we've had, we've delivered um, jointly engineered and fully integrated solutions, tool sets, um, and reference architectures to help our customers. Yeah, no, I, I think when we were back here a little, a little under a year ago talking about the first instantiation of this, uh, it was you know, Matt Hicks wanting to see something turn, you know, OpenShift being able to be turned on within five, you know, less than five minutes and from racking and turn on. So Stu, what do you have to add to that? Yeah, so, so Rob, when we launched uh, this, this update to the partnership with Dell, we started with that containerization because while we've been on this journey uh, with OpenShift for over a decade, we've got thousands of customers doing, it's always, how do I make that simpler? And Dell's got such a great track record at building those solutions, working on those joint integrations, uh, everything from that day one through the entire life cycle. It's difficult from a software standpoint. We try to take that cloud native ecosystem and curate it, integrate it, and maintain it for you. But with partnering with Dell, we get all the way down to the hardware level that that entire piece, we can think of it more uh, like we used to think of our virtual infrastructure. We make it as, you know, here's the unit. When I need to update something, I know that it's been tested, it's been integrated, it's gone through all of those pieces so that we can shorten that cycle of the upgrade because I, I don't want to have to stick it in a sandbox and then wait till all of my pieces work and what about my other pieces of the ecosystem? We want to make sure it all works. You know, storage, networking, uh, you know, compute, all need to have those underlying components. The big change here is 
you know, how do we bring virtual machines into this environment? Because for too long, it's been the discussion of like, oh, well, am I going cloud native and I'm going containerization and leaving along VMs? And we know, unfortunately, nothing ever dies in IT. So um, how do we bring now, we can bring virtual machines into that modern architecture um, with OpenShift virtualization. And now that's part uh, of the Dell Apex uh, for OpenShift solution. No, I, I think that makes total sense. And I, I think when you look at how Things have changed, things have also stayed the same, but as people see, you know, and we have seen through our data with our uh, one of our partners, ETR, one of the things that really has uh, played a role in this is simplicity. And I, I think that uh, recently, back in December, they were out, they talked to 252 uh, organizations across from all different sizes within the global 2000 and even small and medium sized organizations about how they really purchase and how they really look at vendors they're going to purchase from. Uh, so let's take a look at that right now. And they asked the question, what are the most important factors in choosing an IT vendor? The top three reasons for choosing a solution from an IT vendor included ease of use, not surprisingly, was cited 57% of the time. I thought what was interesting is that it was actually up 9% in the last six months, which really is a big factor in the types of solutions you're bringing to market. Along with that, 48% were citing automation, which is another factor that I'm sure we'll dig into a little bit here as well. Uh, and lastly, the third largest was 44% citing reliability and reputation of that vendor. So as we kind of look into this, you know, you know, that's of note. And it really starts with Allison, you know, can you give us kind of a refresher on Apex Cloud Platform for Red Hat? and OpenShift and how it's really delivering and bringing that simplicity to customers. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great segue um, because so the Apex Cloud platform for Red Hat OpenShift was built with, with simplicity and ease of use in mind, right? So being able to run OpenShift on-prem and getting cloud-like agility and efficiency on bare metal with built-in software automation, full stack lifecycle management, um, it really provides you the flexibility and choice um, to set you up for running you know, your, your applications today and also into the future. So it's really like build now and for the future on a single unified platform that can um, consolidate. Yeah, I, I, I think that totally makes a lot of sense bringing it together because we you know, were together last year talking about the introduction of it. And I, I think really the simplicity and being able to understand that, I, I think really, brings us to the question of, you know, what are you announcing today? Yeah, of course. So we're excited. We have some really exciting updates. Um, you know, we've taken customer feedback um, and taken that into account as we enhance the platform. So there, when you think about the Apex Cloud Platform for Red Hat OpenShift, there are really three main components. There's the storage, there's the compute, and there's the software. The software being a combination of our Apex Cloud Platform Foundation software, as well as Red Hat OpenShift, right? So we are announcing enhancements to all three of those components. So specifically, the first one is expanded storage options. Um, so we can support additional customer use cases, addressing smaller footprints. This is something we're hearing our customers wanted. Additionally, um, our enhanced in, uh, compute capabilities. So that's going to be including the latest Intel processors, a broader um, optionality of NVIDIA GPUs. And then finally, um, modernized Red Hat OpenShift capabilities. So we've been talking about Red Hat OpenShift virtualization. That's going to be included by default as part of the, the Apex Cloud platform going forward. And then we're also going to support our latest, the latest OpenShift releases, um, so 4.14 and 4.16. I think that's really exciting because I think a lot of what you're talking about is really bringing value to the customer and listening to what their feedback is. One thing that I'm going to key off of was the inclusion of OpenShift Vert or OpenShift Virtualization in the stack because we recently uh, talked to and published one of our you know, breaking analysis around this subject. And one of the things that we found is that with Broadcom and VM, we're really concentrating on vCloud Foundation or VMware Cloud Foundation and really focused on that 
private cloud, there, people are starting to look for other offerings and for certain use cases that can be broader than that. We also see organizations are looking to have kind of a minimal amount of different stacks that they have in there. So they're weighing the options between containers and virtualization and what is that cloud operating model going to really look like. And I think that you know, for the first time in probably over a decade, the virtualization space is wide open. And we're seeing that virtualization market really be a, uh, a catalyst for people who are trying to re-architect things. Now, Stu, obviously, you know, you're actively promoting and Red Hat is actively promoting OpenShift virtualization. Can you kind of speak, speak to the capabilities and benefits and how that really focuses in on the Apex Cloud Pat platform as well? Yeah, Rob, th thanks so much. So first of all, virtualization is not something that's new for Red Hat. We've got a long history there. Uh, we made an acquisition, I believe it was over a decade ago now, of the company that created KVM. Uh, hypervisor for open source is a solved problem. KVM was used not only by a lot of Red Hat customers, but is underlying you know, virtualization for a lot of the clouds uh, that are out there. We put that into our OpenStack offering, the leading OpenStack uh, offering. We had a long partnership with Dell uh, on OpenStack. And through the open source Qvert project, we helped bring KVM into the Kubernetes containerization world. And not just for OpenShift, it was you know, started by Google, it's used by uh, Suse Rancher, uh, it's used by many other companies. Uh, NVIDIA is actually a large uh, contributor and user of uh, the open source Qvert project. So Qvert helps bring the open source virtualization into the open source and container and Kubernetes world, but they're still VMs. So Really, if you think about it, all I'm doing is I'm bringing a VM and I'm making it just another pod. So on the one hand, if I'm a admin that's all been working on VMs, I'm taking a VM, I'm moving it into a, another VM. Many of the things are similar. Yes, some of the terminology is a little bit different and I did a little bit of training. We usually find in like four hours, we can actually give you like the translation guide and get you some hands-on training to be able to say, okay, this is the way I did things. Is it a one-to-one -one or do I do things a little bit different? And secondly, most co companies are looking to have that cloud operating model. Well, unfortunately, VMs have had a great run, but they're really not the architecture that I want to be able to manage my environment today. So not only do I put it into containers and Kubernetes, but I can actually take advantage of the rest of what's an open shift. So most companies start with things like pipelines. I want to do CI, CD. Do I tie it into some other pieces of my architecture? Oh, we've touched a little bit on AI. Containerization is going to play a large role uh, in, into AI, but there might be still some places where I'm going to need VMs in there. And here they live side by side in the modern architecture. So, um, just a quick data stat. I know Rob, you all love it. Um, so, you know, OpenShift over a year ago passed over a billion dollars of ARR. For the first half of this year, IBM reported that OpenShift is growing over 40%. OpenShift virtualization in the same 12 months grew over 135% from a customer standpoint, from a VM standpoint, it's up like 175%. So huge growth, huge adoption. Uh, customers are very interested. We've been doing roadshows and it's partnerships like Dell that are going to help bring this to the masses because they want that simplicity. Dell's been, you know, one of the premier companies in the virtualization space from day one and the OpenShift solution helps give customers an easy transition to get to a more modern environment. Yeah, I, I think with the you know, Apex Cloud Platform, it is about choice. And I, I think, again, having that choice of containers and VMs sitting next to each other inside the same cloud operating model is very attractive to customers. Yeah, Rob, just a point. When, we, when I meet with customers and they say, what are the impediments? You know, One of the big ones I mentioned already is, oh my gosh, this is the way I know how to do things. Well. One of those pieces is like, well, I've got my storage stack. Am I limited to, I can only go to HCI, or I have my you know, three-tier storage? Well, with the Dell Apex, you actually can do both. And you know, that, that's one of the, the great things about this partnership is we've got some flexibility. The expanded storage options are giving you a lot of the options. So you don't want to move from one platform to another and say, I, I, I believe you started out, it's a platform for today and for the future. And that's what this uh, Dell Apex Cloud with OpenShift and OpenShift virtualization gives you. Yeah. And just to build on that um, quickly, like it, it, we're talking a lot about the simplicity and the flexibility, but one thing 
you know, I also want to drive home is like the peace of mind that we that we are able to deliver with our solutions. So with the Apex Cloud Platform for Red Hat OpenShift, everything remains in a continuously validated state. Um, so there's also built-in compliance and security. And on the Dell side, we do thir we do over 13,000 hours of testing before each release to you know ensure that our customers are getting the outcomes they expect. So combining that with the level in of investment that Red Hat does um, and their con community-driven innovation, um, you know we've really done a lot of the the end-to-end -end work to make sure our customers are getting that assurance um, and confidence with their solution um, as well. Yeah, and I, I think I want to pick up on kind of that storage opt optionality because I think, again, it's it's a pretty big thing when you talk about organizations and being able to help, you know, future-proof them. How do you see that playing out as well with the, the how you're bringing storage optionality to this? Yeah, exactly. So we're hearing the same thing from our customers. I mean, that's part of what drove this, this expansion, the expanded support. So... You know, one thing to level set on is that um, our Apex Cloud Foundation software does need a minimal amount of block storage um, to be able to deliver. That's really what delivers all of that automation within the platform. But what we've expanded are those op those optionalities. So originally, it was specifically based on PowerFlex, which is an awesome solution and still available. And we are expanding to also include now the options of having that underlying block storage be based on our power store. So getting you know the the great you know performance enterprise grade you know data services that you get with a power store, which is great and designed for a mid range type of customer. And there are all we've also added. Um, our Red Hat OpenShift Data Foundation, um, which is really designed for smaller clusters when you have like a minimal footprint of, of block file or object storage that you want to deploy. So this gives you a lot more optionality. Plus, in addition to addressing smaller footprints with things like PowerStore for mid-range and then ODF, um, you know, we always also keep in mind that with our Dell container storage modules, you're able to also add on additional external storage for things like PowerFlex for file, object scale for object. Um, those two platforms are really important when it comes to things like AI and being able to drive those modern AI applications. So going through all of these options, ultimately it just speaks to the flexibility we're offering, um, the breadth of choice, so we can meet a broad set of specific needs based on the customer use cases, um, footprint, et cetera, that they're looking to. Yeah, no, I, I think again, you know, amazing we got through 15 minutes without uh, talking <laughs> about AI until that point, but I think you start to look at it that really AI needs a whole bunch of these things. It need, it's going to have VMs, it's going to have containers, it's going to have models and different pieces together. Uh, I, I think, again, you know, we were all together just uh, this past spring and we kind of really talked about what Dell and Red Hat were up to with some of the you know, validated uh, designs around AI as well. Uh, Stu, you know, what are you seeing in the developments with Red Hat OpenShift AI, and where does this platform really fit in with that? Yeah, uh, th thanks Rob. So first of all, OpenShift AI has been something we, you, you, as you said, uh, even before the VM discussion uh, came into the Dell Apex, OpenShift AI is something we've looked at there because all of those underlying pieces that we talked about, uh, you talk about the storage requirements and scalability, automation, uh, and the, the flexibility that you're going to want for this architecture are the underpinning for what I need for AI. Um, so OpenShift AI has been an option uh, on top of the Dell Apex uh, for, for OpenShift uh, for, from in earlier days. Now VMs just expand that option because if you look at, okay, I'm looking at my alternatives for virtualization, many of the solutions out there are like, well, I'm doing V2V and I'm actually not doing anything that's all that different. Do I want to be ready for kind of the traditional way of doing things, or do I want to be ready to take advantage of AI and have the storage capabilities that I need, the automation that I need, and build in more of these cloud-native architectures? So that's what we have here, and it's a really good offering. OpenShift AI has been having you know, significant growth this year, uh, both from what we're doing as well as uh, our partnership with IBM, where o OpenShift AI is part of WatsonX.ai. Uh, so, um, Good growth, uh, and it's a solution that we've had that predates the generative AI discussion. So predictive AI, gen AI, we can handle both of those type of environments, and 
what's interesting is a majority of the customers that I talk to are actually starting those in their data center because they want to get a few GPUs. They're really concerned about the security of their environment. So they want to do those early tests in the safety of their environment. So what's a nice, simple, and cost-effective way to do that in my environment? Well, Dell fits that very nicely. Yeah, and, I, and we're hearing that as well because especially we see it in the data that actually for the first time this last quarter, we saw the data tick up on budget. And one of the reasons was people were putting, trying these huge, massive things in the cloud and decided, that, hey, maybe we should start with smaller uh, proof of concepts around this and being on-prem and being close to the data uh, it happens to be that, and I, actually with the storage options as well, I could yeah. see how that plays yeah. off. Just, just, just Rob, one, one comment on that. Uh, there, there's a certain virtualization player that said like, well, the, the cloud's just too expensive and too complex and doesn't do compliance. Um, our viewpoint actually is this is going to be hybrid. Uh, as Allison said, we want a consistent way of doing things. So everything that we have from OpenShift, OpenShift virtualization, OpenShift AI, we can actually do all of that in AWS also, and OpenShift and OpenShift AI across you know, all of the cloud uh, type of solutions out there. So um, we know customers are actually going to be taking advantage of some of the innovation in the cloud. There's lots of AI in the cloud, and we actually integrate with many of those uh, features too. So it is a hybrid world, it's multi-cloud, um, and we want customers to have choice, not trying to just limit themselves to you know one vendor or one solution. Yeah, I, I think that is the way I, I'm a big, you know, we're big believers in hybrid and super cloud and all of that. And I think it is the cloud operating model in general across that. And I think it, inference will be done in a whole bunch of different places. Uh, I think a lot of it centers around where your data is at and how it all ties together. So it's, it's great to hear that. But Allison, uh, for those who didn't hear the announcement around uh, what Dell, Red Hat, and NVIDIA are up to, why don't you kind of give them a high level view of what was said? Yeah, sure. I mean, one thing that's been really exciting about what about the, this partnership is being able to see some of the outcomes our customers have actually been delivering. So whether it's things like creating a digital assistant, um, speech pattern recognition, um, you know, really combining the power of Dell, Red Hat, and NVIDIA is giving customers these simple validated blueprints that they can implement quickly and that quickly piece is important because you know velocity is something that we're continuing to you know we're really focusing on at Dell because just the speed at which things are moving today with AI um, it's really critical that we're able to help our our customers um, keep pace with some of these modern challenges. Yeah, I mean time to RO AI if you wanted to <laughs> put it put it that way is definitely a key and we're we're seeing that as well. Uh, you know, any last thoughts you want to kind of uh, drop in here? Yeah, um, I would just say I'm really excited for our customers to be able to experience what we've been doing with the Apex Cloud platform for Red Hat OpenShift. Um, you know, it's it's a great turnkey. Um, fully integrated stack that is focused on simplicity, it's focused on velocity, and helping you manage your traditional workloads alongside these modern challenges, containers, AI, being able to keep pace with this, um, all on a unified platform. Um, and so there are a lot of ways, and with these ex new enhancements, I think we can even address a broader set of customers, a broader set of use cases, so it becomes more relevant to a broader customer base. And I think, um, you know, there's a lot of ways customers can take advantage of this and see for themselves. So I encourage, you know, looking at our demos, um, our joint briefings we're doing, we have a test drive program. So i um, really excited for our customers to get out there and get their, get their hands on it and see what we've been up to. Yeah, and the thing I'll add, Rob, is uh, Dell has a phenomenal channel uh, that really understands the virtualization environment. And there's been a lot of concern over the last six to 12 months as to, oh my gosh, I had a business, I knew what I was doing, and now there's a lot of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. The migrations, we need help. You know, this requires bodies to be able to do this. And if we can't solve this issue that customers have today for virtualization, they're not going to have the budget or the infrastructure or the architecture to be able to take advantage of AI and they will be left behind. So together, Dell, Red Hat, and our partners, both on the channel side as well as the technology side, we've got a lot of opportunity there to help our customers 
uh, really almost a judo move as I look at it. We need to be able to take the momentum of this virtualization change, and that gets us ready to be able to embrace the AI opportunity that's in front of us. So lots of opportunity there and uh, great opportunity for us to all work together. Yeah, I mean, I, it definitely marries up a lot with where Dell has been going for over a year now with really the focus on the partners and the ecosystem. And I know Red Hat is the same way. So I want to thank you both for coming on board. It's uh, always fun to have you both here. You know, again, it's, you know, sometimes you get to, you know, do these with, uh, uh, you know, and it just feels really forced, but this thing with you guys make it, makes it such an easy thing to do. So I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, thank you for coming on board. Thanks so much for having us. And thank you for watching this episode of Build Now and for the Future with Dell and Red Hat on the Cube. Stay tuned for more analysis and news. Hello and welcome to this CUBE Conversation. I'm Dave Vellante with the CUBE Research and we're digging into recent announcements around Dell and Red Hat. I'm here with Rob Strecce. Now, right now, I think it's safe to say that the two topics are, that are very hot um, in the community are AI infrastructure and of course, virtualization. Rob, you just had Alison Langdon on. She's the Director of Product Marketing for Multi-Cloud and Hyper-Converged Infrastructure at at Dell Technologies. Stu Miniman was back in the house, who was the Senior Director of Market Insights for hybrid platforms at, at Red Hat. You guys are on theCUBE going through some of the highlights of the announcement. Uh, I know Red Hat and Dell announced the Apex Cloud Platform with Red Hat OpenShift last year, late last year, around November, I think. Uh, and we're going to discuss what is new in this announcement. But first, I want to share some ETR data that talks to the momentum for containers. And this data is from more than 1,700 IT decision makers across 19 market sectors that ETR tracks. And that green line at 40% indicates a highly elevated spending velocity, which is on the vertical axis. And that measures what we call net score. And the horizontal axis is penetration into the data set for each sector. Now, I call your attention to MLAI. Note that since the introduction of ChatGPT, it bottomed, that was, you can see that bottom there, that's October 2022, the month before ChatGPT was announced, and it's steadily increased since then, while many other sectors, including cloud and virtualization, have decelerated, as we show here by the squiggly lines. But Rob, the container sector has held up better than other sectors in this time period. It's stayed above that 40% high watermark and has come down a little bit, but why has it done so well and what does it mean in your view? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's great to see this in the data where we can actually understand that a lot of what is being built from an AI ML perspective is actually in containers. And I think people are leaning in because if you look at things like NVIDIA, the NIM software that they put out, they're all containers. And what they're doing that is for ease of use and being able to bring the portability of these models, they're containerizing those so that they can actually do governance on some of those models. So there's a lot of containers technology and Kubernetes technology being put into this AI ML. Now, like you said, it is uh, stayed above or at the 40% line, uh, that kind of money line is that, you know, as it's upticked recently, we think we've seen that another uptick in AI ML. And I think this is people trying to get to AI ML uh, really succinctly. I think another thing that you see dropping uh, recently and kind of plateauing over the last couple quarters is really virtualization. I think people are looking at how do they bring these things back together and how they're going to really be able to go back to understanding that. So down at the bottom here, you see kind of virtualization had a nosedive uh, as the announcements around Broadcom and VMware acquisitions started to transpire, but now have plateaued in the 20% range. And I, th I think, again, virtualization will never go away, uh, kind of like the mainframe, you know, software mainframe, you could, you could say, or one did say at one point in time. Uh, but I, th I think what we see here is that people are looking for a new way to approach this, especially with these brand new apps. So I think everybody's leaning into the cloud native containerized apps for these AI ML 
applications. Yeah, so containers is a simplifying infrastructure, even though you know if you want to do it yourself, it does take some skill, or you got to find a partner to help you do that. But so now, let's take a look at some other ETR data. Back in December, our partner Enterprise Technology Research talked to 252 organizations to try and understand how they're looking at IT purchases. They asked the question, what are the most important factors in choosing an IT vendor? And the top three reasons for choosing a solution from a technology company was number one, ease of use. It was cited by 57% of the respondents, which is notably up 9% in six months. And then 48% cited automation, and then 44% said reliability and reputation. Uh, so Rob, how does this solution address the needs, the one that's being announced by Dell and, and Red Hat, how does that address the needs of customers as they potentially look into the transition from some or part or all of their virtualization estate from VMware? Yeah, I, I think they're looking for an easy button to be able to go there. And when you start to look at where Red Hat has been very strong, Red Hat OpenShift in particular, is still deployed a lot on VMware. So if you start to look at that, you already in that environment, you already know how to manage a containerized Red Hat OpenShift environment. I, I think it becomes really interesting. And this announcement with ACP, the Apex Cloud Platform for Red Hat OpenShift, I think gives that easy button. In fact, it was Matt Hicks who said, hey, go build me something that I can turn on OpenShift in five minutes or less. And so time to value is really important. That ease of use, the automation, obviously Ansible is in there as, you know, as a uh, component that you can bring on. You have OpenShift AI as well as a component as we talk about that uptick in AI and ML. And you see that a lot of this easy button stuff has really been put into that. And a lot of thought has gone into the ACP underlying foundational software as well to make it easy. And this is not like a, hey, you just slap it on top. There is a lot that goes into it versus a DIY type solution. So Dell, of course, is a, a, a huge company. It's kind of become the, the everything store for tech, if you will. So we want to take a look now at Red Hat's momentum inside of Dell accounts. Uh, and so it continues to be strong, as you can see here from this data from, from ETR. Uh, ACP, as Rob just mentioned, for Red Hat OpenShift, really aims to simplify how you're running OpenShift. But Rob, take us through sort of your takeaways here. Yeah, I, I think again, if, when you start to look at how this has doubled in a year, and, and I think that that to me was the really interesting, that gray bar versus the yellow bar, where it you really have strong momentum, over 40% within these accounts of OpenShift. To me, that's things coming together in a hybrid cloud manner, because I think a lot of pieces that Dell has put in place within the Apex platform, with some of the storage announcements that they've been making about how you can go to cloud with that, where OpenShift already is, helps to build momentum for the two companies together. Uh, so what we've been seeing is that really they've been expanding a lot of the storage options that they've been doing too, from the Power family or you know, with PowerStore, PowerScale, and PowerFlex being integrated in, as well as part of this announcement was the fact that they brought back uh, OpenShift data as well, foundation. So the whole goal here is really to simplify how you're running you know, on-prem. So it's this whole notion you want to get a, you know, substantially the cloud operating model and efficiency on bare metal and you have a software you know defined infrastructure and automation you've got the full life cycle management so what specifically rob is being announced from dell and red hat what do we need to know about it yeah i, I think again I, I just kind of mentioned it and let the cat out of the bag on the storage options but i think that that is really important to people from an ease of use and from a reliability perspective is that they're looking at this and saying, hey, I want to use what I have already and join that into that because mobility of the data, especially if you're going to go and use other services in a cloud on top of the Red Hat stack. So you want to use maybe SageMaker with uh, OpenShift AI or something like that. You can do that and you can actually move that data with that entire stack underlying because of the Dell Apex uh, cloud platform solution. I think AI is definitely on the mind of everybody and they're enhancing this uh, by bringing out new 
Intel processors as well as the latest GPUs from NVIDIA. And I think the, one of the most intriguing capabilities that they've added in, uh, I, you know, again, I'm not surprised, is really been uh, OpenShift virtualization or OpenShift vert, which is based on the cube vert being able to bring VMs. Because as we've talked about, a lot of times things don't fit nicely into a container or into a microservice architecture. So you still want to bring along and you may have something that is already virtualized that you need to have with that application because locality of data is important. So I think that again, what they're doing is adding all of these pieces and still claiming that it's 90% more uh, or 90% faster time to value by going and using this ACP for Red Hat OpenShift platform versus you know DIY solution. Yeah, and sometimes those microservices, Rob, aren't so micro. Um, <laughs> let's talk about what's happening in virtualization and storage. Uh, it's interesting, I mean, you go back a, a decade plus and these were sort of the hot areas. And of course the ecosystem and VMware made big efforts to, to make all this stuff invisible. And I think did a pretty good job of it, but you still got to, you still got to have run it on, on, on something. We recently published our perspective on the state of virtualization uh, in the market. And we have been discussing this at length for the past couple of weeks. We were just, Rob, at VMware Explore. What were your takeaways? What, what did we learn there? And how does it relate to this announcement? I, I think, again, it, it's a perfect timing for them to put OpenShift Vert into this platform because I think there's a lot of applications. I talked to a number of customers at Explore that were having multiple different siloed stacks, I guess you could say, of here's my OpenShift stack, here's my VMware stack, different container stacks, and they were looking for a way to like shrink the number of stacks that they were actually utilizing. So bringing this together where you have not only on-prem that really VMware is maniacally focused on as Hawk talked about, you know, pretty <laughs> succinctly, it, but that you can go hybrid cloud, that uh, OpenShift is in all of the major service providers today, as well as a number of CSPs and MSPs around the world. So we, I think what we learned was that there was a lot going on within that ecosystem where VMware's really focused on you know, VMware Cloud Foundation, not as much, although they, I think a good marketing aspect coming out of last week was that, you know, again, back in March, they made Kubernetes a first class citizen within vCloud Foundation. So I think there will be some, you know, co-opetition in that space when you get to that Kubernetes layer and what is the platform. Yeah, and there has been for a number of years, it's just kind of heightened right now with all the market tensions that are going on. What about use cases? Sometimes it's really helpful for customers to really understand how others are using it. What do you see as the predominant use cases here? Yeah, I, I think that we do see people turning up these new AI applications. I think, you know, leaning in in the fact that uh, it kind of seems like a perfect fit to put OpenShift AI on this platform. Because again, inference and being at the edge uh, really is where a lot of the inference is going to run is at that edge. So having these appliances that can grow either, uh, you know, in height and depth of storage or across with processing power, uh, really brings together some very interesting uh, AI use cases. I also think that, you know, back at Summit uh, in the, the uh, back in the spring, it, was, it feels like almost a year ago, but really when they talked about Red Hat and Dell and NVIDIA bringing out these blueprints for being able to do AI, I think the, you know, looking at things like digital assistance, performing speech recognition, doing that all at the edge where latency is really uh, a key and critical factor for the success. Because what we've been seeing is that you have to get the RO of AI out there and be able to, how do you get your return on AI is a really big piece of the factors that go into building these new applications. Do you see AI as just another workload? I probably shouldn't say just, but AI as a workload or is it a, an integral part of all workloads. How do you see that playing out and what does that mean for the underlying infrastructure? I think it's both. I think, I think you hit it the nail on the head. I think that this is going to be built into a lot of existing applications. Uh, in fact, we're seeing that in some of the data that we, you know, I know we 
go deep on all the time, where it's, is this really a part of the application or is it an application? And I think people are rethinking their applications as they rebuild them and look at how do I inject AI? What is the right AI? And do I have human in the loop? And how does that work as well? And I think that's a big piece of it is when you're you know, looking at where AI sits, a lot of times you want it to be responsive if it's a, uh, you know, a bot that's helping a customer service organization do transaction uh, processing and updating of uh, account records, for instance. I'm a bank and I want to be able to supply really quickly, hey, here's some things you may have missed in your account. You know, maybe you want to upgrade your, your bank account to this and upsell them or something like that while they're on the line quickly. That, that real function is part of other apps, but is a, an enabler to that customer service agent. Rob, there's so much going on in the market. There's, there's a lot of confusion out there. There's a lot of tension right now, but, but things are settling down. Uh, great to see the partnership between Dell and Red Hat. A lot of information at Dell.com. I called it the everything story. Pretty much anything you want in tech, you can get there. Obviously, Red Hat has some resources. And we're helping you navigate this as well. Uh, SiliconAngle.com has got all the news, the Cube research, if you want to go deep. And of course, thecube.net, where we host all of our video and our, and our digital TV products. Rob, thanks, great to, great to have you back on and thanks for the analysis. And thank, yeah, thank you for watching this CUBE conversation with theCUBE Research. Let us know what you think and how you're dealing with the changing market conditions. This is Dave Vellante for Rob Stretchay. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.